The standard baseline is what's called current law. It's not actually literally current law, but it's close enough for most purposes. It assumes that all tax cuts that are supposed to expire actually do expire, except a few, which we'll just leave aside. It assumes the alternative minimum tax is going to grow rapidly over time and sort of take over the tax system. Uh, it assumes that Congress is going to make the Medicare cuts that it is supposed to by law, but as Ron hinted at earlier, never does. And it assumes other things about uh, military spending, direct disc discretionary sp spending is held constant after adjusting for, for inflation. So the current law baseline is basically the answer to the question, what would happen if Congress literally did nothing the next 10 years? Passed no legislation, they just reappropriated the same amount of discretionary spending each year. Now, that's not a very realistic baseline to use if you want to see where we're headed, okay? But it is a really good baseline to use if you want Congress to have to recognize the costs of any changes to tax laws or spending items that, that it enacts. It's the equivalent of saying, here's my weight now, I want to lose 15 pounds relative to my weight now. That means relative to the current law baseline. If Congress does anything, uh, it needs to start where it is and cut relative to the current laws. There, there, there is an alternative baseline that has been used a lot, and I feel some responsibility for this. As Ron mentioned, I've been putting out alternative baselines for a long time. Uh, Alan Auerbach and I have been doing this for over a decade now. Uh, even back when the government was in surplus in 2001, the, all, the current policy baseline, which is basically the answer to the question, what happens if Congress acts the w in, the, in the next 10 years the way it has in the past, sort of a business-as-usual baseline, uh, has shown large and increasing deficits over time. So the current policy baseline assumes that the tax cuts get extended. It assumes that we don't let the AMT, the alternative minimum tax, take over the whole system. Uh, it assumes we don't spend as much in Iraq and Afghanistan over the next 10 years as we do now, that we phase that down. It assumes that Congress is incapable of making these Medicare cuts that for the last 10 years it has shown it is incapable of making. So it's kind of a business as usual baseline. It's a really good measure if you want to see what path we're on if we don't change our ways. It's the 45 pounds gaining over the next decade if we continue to eat badly. Okay? Uh, so for purpose, Alan and my point over the last decade has been we're headed in this bad way and here's the evidence. Here's the current policy baseline. Okay? You don't want to use that as a baseline though if you're cutting, if, if you're trying to re reduce the budget deficit. Once you reduce the budget deficit, that's, or once, once you want to reduce the budget deficit, that's the equivalent of saying, hey, I need to go on a diet. Right? And I'm not going to build in 45 pounds or four and a half trillion dollars of increased weight or increased budget deficits before I start cutting the deficit. So uh, the current policy baseline has always been a good guide to where we're headed if we don't fix things. But it's not an excuse to not fix things. And all the committees, Ball Simpson uh, uh, included, uh, the Obama administration, the Congress, they always want to use the current policy baseline because it builds in all these nice things, the extension of the Bush tax cuts, get rid of the AMT, uh, but it's not a serious deficit, it's not a serious approach to solving the budget deficit because it says basically, well, we're going to cut taxes first by four and a half trillion dollars, then we're going to start balancing the budget. Okay, well, why don't you just not cut taxes by four and a half trillion dollars would be the obvious uh, rejoinder to that.